This industry is so full of alcoholics, you know. Wow. So you can get further in it if you just stay sober. A guy like Casper could survive of making terrible music for a long time and still be prominent. Like right now, like probably the most influential rapper, uh, unfortunately, he didn't live to actually see his success. is probably Mbora. Three worst South African acts at the moment. And why? Uh, yeah. Right now, Casper. What it do, hitters? Welcome to it. It's Heavy Hitters. I go by the name Gabo Moth, aka your absolute fave. And I'm the Naked J. You'll get the D later. Why can't I get it now? You can. Let's go to ads real quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is Heavy Hitters. We'll be right back. No, let's stay here naked. I was joking. I know you're wearing pajamas, but please don't take the theme too seriously. Mm. What up? I no. missed you. Hi, bye. I missed you too. You know how it is. Mm. Yeah, you're looking good. As always, usual. International as standard always, procedure. As always, yeah. Always deliver the heat. Mm -hmm. So what's Are video? you checking me out? What's that? I'm looking. you well put together today. Today? Yeah. I'm impressed. Anyway. You're learning. I'm impressed. What, from who? Ah, Not Pella. you. Ah, you know who's been... S ah, never mind. <laughs> anyway, what's been your heavy for this week? And my, what's been my your heavy? Hit? Oh, yeah. my, you know, I'm going to look like someone that's always fighting or doing some really uh -huh. like crazy stuff. Mm. But again, camera can't see this. Do you see these scars? You're a one. Yeah. Guys. Friends. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. So I was like at my friend's house, I get there, mm. she hanging out with her man, but there's like another girl there. Mm. So I'm like, they're weird. They're into like weird stuff. Uh. Then they start fighting. Uh. Obviously, Gamo is like, oh, break it up, guys. Let's not do this in front of people. Kumbaya, my lord. So you try to break up like a she threesome kind me. of thing? She, oh, my she basically dug into me. And I just thought to myself, what kind of disturbed, unstable female who is in love with a cheater would do that? Oh. It doesn't make sense. Right? So he had two women in the house. Yes, they both. That's what I found out later. So I got the scratches only to find out the juice and the squeeze. But also I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm going to unfriend, unfriend the person because I'm just not about it. Mm, my heavy. Yeah. Is it not obvious? Gown. No, dude, <laughs> load shedding, it's back. So, <laughs> you know, so what I wanted to oh, wear today, you can't I can't day, it was laundry day yesterday. So, this will be me today, and I've got gigs later on. So, if, you're going to, um, this is it. I can't go anywhere creased. This is it. Uh, oh, but you can go everywhere naked. Mm. Hit my hit for the week. Uh, well, load shedding is back. So, you know, load shedding is a, it's a dreamer's paradise for people that don't want to be... This is not be... an Eskom ad, by <laughs> the way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, you know, a dreamer's paradise for people that don't want to get productive. Because mm -hmm. I can start using excuses like, ah, guys, I can't do the Zoom meeting. I have load shedding. Ah, sorry, my presentation is not ready. I have load shedding. Yeah. So you can get out of... Oh, we get, I'm I sure, see you. Yeah. You're a focused man. That's right. Even more focus, we mm. want to hear from you guys. Let us know what was your heavy and your hit of the week on social media. On Facebook, we are Heavy Hitters. And uh, Twitter, Instagram, Heavy Hitters underscore ZA. Let's do this. The hashtag is Heavy Hitters and your faith. Not that deep. Mm. Some call him a troll, some call him the authority. At the end of the day, it's just Nota being Nota. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome him. Uh, are how well? are you guys doing? I like how his smile is always uh. like. <laughs> it's a Welcome to my he's, party. Got a, he's, he's got the bag. What's in the bag? In the bag? Yeah. No, nothing. Just hand sanitizer. Lies. Like... Wifey sent you money Do again, you have, didn't she? Like ten rand notes. Mm. Like no, a lot no, of them no, no money. A charger. You know, you need to have a charger, a plug. Notes, nothing. You know, no, 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 no. no I don't carry you cash. Don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Swipe a swipe and no, cash. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the game uh, Tell Me, Try Me, Down Me? 
Okay, tell me, try me, down me. Mm -hmm. Okay, this no. is how it works. It's pretty simple. Is tell it a drinking me game? It's truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, no relax. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you see in front of you? Mm -hmm. Drags. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, tell okay. me, it's truth. Try me, dare, down mm -hmm. me, drags. Mm -hmm. And you don't drink, so I don't know what, what we're going to... Oh, he doesn't drink? Apparently, word on the street is that mm. he doesn't... Why don't, <laughs> Why don't you drink? Why don't you drink? I quit while I was ahead. <laughs> like, this industry is so full of alcoholics, you know. Wow. So you can get further in it if you just stay sober. Have you seen any artists or, you know, that have thrown their careers down the line? Or down because the drain lot, because of alcohol? A lot. Because of mm. alcohol. Name you know and shame? I mean? No, I, I don't need to name and shame. I mean, they're, they're out there for everyone to mm. see. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know I mean? Look in the mirror. So, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's just one thing. Um, it's not like I was a heavy drinker. Mm. Mm, I didn't hit the liquor heavily. But when I did drink, mm. it was like open bar. And I got into the industry very young. Oh. So, like... It was just free booze. You let it rip. Free booze. Yeah, like I'd over drink all the time. It'd be like, no, no, no. What sort of stuff would you get up to when you were like drunk? drunk? I mean, uh, I, 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 that's the thing. I wouldn't be able to remember. Wow. That bad, bad. Oh, so yeah. tequila okay. was your drink not of even, choice. Not even. I drank whatever people were drinking. Johnny Walker, probably Black Label. Um, my drink of choice, I used to like have like a four pack of Peroni in the fridge. And mm -hmm. Drink it occasionally, but like, yeah, and wine, but like, um, I would drink at parties. That was like the thing, and it was just too much. Yeah. Jeez, so you drink baggie. everything. He's, a he's got a little bag. I, I drank exactly. everything. The last thing I drank was Ace of Spades. I went to a, a pajama party on oh, Oxford. Oh, here we go. Uh, at, 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 at the, was it the Oxford or something? There was a nightclub on Oxford Street back in the day. Oxford? Yeah. You know what Oxford is popular for? Yeah, Not yeah, just yeah. The yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But the nightlife no. as well. I was asking about the notes also. Yeah. No, 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 no. This thing is no. Okay, yeah. let's play the game. Uh, tell me, try me, down me. Okay. Uh, pick, pick between tell me and try uh, Tell me. me. Tell you. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the DJ that works at that red radio station. The one that looks you like You actually this. drove all the way to Y. Yes. Because you wanted, uh, it is a DJ ankle tap, to have a fight with him, and you told him, come out the station right now. Except I'm not waiting till after your show. I'm right outside B. I'm standing on my sunroof. You saw me, you, you took a video of my car, yeah? Okay? Come, let's do it right now. Open up, John for the gate. John, for the gate. Sing. Nah, not mm. really. Were you, were you serious? I, were you I was trolling. I wasn't capping. I was trolling. I actually really drove there. I mm -hmm. went there with a uh, with a with a cameraman, not a goon. Like he said, I was there with some goon. Imagine my cameraman was so shocked, thinking someone's calling him a goon. I was there to take content. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was promoting um, the magazine cover that I was doing at the time. So like I was like, okay, no, let me dominate the conversation and then um, get my message across. So that cover did well. I mean, um, the magazine itself. You know, they haven't gotten that many views. I think I've got like five times as many views as their next best vi um, viewed video on their YouTube page, so yeah. You and that DJ, are you cool though? Like, I, like I'm cool, Like, I, but I, I'm not too familiar with his, his work. I don't actually so even listen to radio. Yeah, why did I didn't want to fight him. He tagged me, he, he, he sent a video, mm -hmm. like on Instagram, mm. about me dissing Casper, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, so I was like, okay, why is this guy wanting to interfere? And anyway, I was done with Casper anyway. Yeah. Um, so I was like, ha, huh, this is a nice distraction. Let me move on from Casper very quickly to some Tappy. to someone else, mm. you know. And it was a very quick, you know, um, thirty minutes driving from Waterfall to to YFM Studios, collect mm. some content, drink some water, and, right. and mind your business. And mind my business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Yeah. Tell me, try Tell me. me, try me, try me. Wrap your favorite nasty sea verse. Uh, I don't have one, but. <laughs> I don't have a favorite necessity verse, but I know betrayal like I know like I like like I know my siblings or something. Like that's a line. So that's that, that's his That subject. line is, is very profound. It, like when he said that line it really hit me. It was so like, he's just got lines. Career, he doesn't have verses. Has a line. No, I, I don't memorize his verses. Like mm -hmm. um 
it's very difficult, like in rap, right? Yeah. We, we grew up idolizing people who had accomplished and, you know, come to a certain level. And Nasty, because he's a young guy in his career, you know, there's no way I could ever look at myself as anything other than a big brother to him. So, mm. um, I, like, I don't look, like, as I, I wouldn't listen to my little brother's advice on life, you know, but I'd listen to Jay-Z, you know. Um, or pro kid. Do you think you've acted like a big brother to him? Because like many would say, but you're always giving him flag. Like you never cut him some slack. Oh, I just rhymed. Should I be a rapper? Uh, no. I, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can no. just be a yeah. um, I, I mean, people say that, but no, I think I've given a lot of love um, and a lot more concern than a lot of people who like just cheer for you, um, knowing that you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. And, you know, um, and... You know, it's just sad um, that, you know, not much has materialized since 2017 okay. or 2018 for him. You say that you will, you only memorize rhymes of rappers that have accomplished mm. stuff. You know how it is. In the hood, they'll say, ah, we are, we are rap, who rap, America. So yeah. he's accomplished stuff to, like, the little kids. Nah. What, what does it take to, in your eyes, to be an no one accomplished knows him, rapper? No, no one knows him in America. But what okay. I'll tell you is that, you sure? like, no, they don't know. Like, people, like, they, okay. it, it's not like he can fill a venue of a thousand people. I've actually watched him. I actually went to his show in the Bronx in New York uh, when he went to perform there um, to support. What it takes to make it as a great rapper is, you know, you need to have a profound message. Mm. And I think that um, one person who had that profound message was Pro Kid. Yeah. And uh, the saddest thing about him is that his message did not commercialize um, enough or did not materialize into a commercial um, um, enterprise that could support him long beyond um, his popularity had waned, you know. And so by the time the, the new generation of rappers came in, you know, brands weren't looking at the pro kids of the world and giving them big deals the same way they did for like um, retired footballers like Mark Fish and mm. Lucas Khadebe and Dr. Kumalo and Francois Pina um, from a rugby perspective, you know, all these other legends. So that frustration like literally killed him. But nope. don't you think that maybe, oh, sorry, uh, no. Nehi Wakey, don't ahead. you think that Nasty is, is basically doing what Pro Kid failed to do? No. In terms of, because you're saying no, he, he, ha he had the, the stuff, but he couldn't commercialize, and here's no. Nasty, and he's commercializing. No, Nasty did not commercialize anything. What, in what, fact, what is he doing? What do you call what he's doing? Um, well, I mean, he hasn't even sold as many records as Pro Kid was able to sell. I mean, yes, the PR machine is there and people can celebrate it and everything else, but he hasn't achieved what the Pro Kids of the world achieved when they were achieving it. Didn't achieve what the WHPs of the world achieved when they were achieving it. Didn't achieve what the Squatter Camps, the Flabbers of the world have achieved. And we've seen this. So people have got a recency bias. And just because someone is hot right now, then they then assume that he's the hottest thing that ever was. But we've seen much bigger and much more impactful hip hop um, stars that come from South Africa. So that, what did, what did the likes of Squatter Camp, Amu, um, mm. you know, Double HP and the likes, mm. what mm. did they accomplish that your, they, they were the able to like take, they were season. able, they um, were, so like it's all, um, for me, it's a continuum. Mm. And um, so they were able to take American rap, right? Mm -hmm. Which was the cutting edge of youth music in the world at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And they were able to localize it so that, um, um, successfully and localize it to the extent that, you know, we could also emulate it. Like we were able to produce trap and some of the best trap music in the world is like made by MT, like Avery is probably one of the best trap albums ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Basically, what that did is that that proved that the kids that are making music in South Africa, in the townships or wherever they're making it, whether it be in the burbs as well, mm. are on the same level as yes. the best innovators in the States. Mm. And when that technology gap was closed, right, we're using the same technology, we're using the same free to loops, then we could then innovate using our culture. And our culture, our dance culture, you know, brought back the revival of Guaito. And um, I think the role of SA Hip Hop and what it was able to progress to mm. was that we were able to keep Guaito long and alive long enough for it to actually break globally. Mm. And that's what we're seeing right now with Amapiano. Okay. okay.
Tell me, try me. Last one. Uh, uh, tell me. <laughs> three worst South African acts at the moment. And why? The three worst South African acts at the moment and why? Okay. Um, hmm. Damn. Five seconds or you Five take seconds. the shot. Uh, yeah. Right now, I would say um, three worst. Mm. Uh, I'd say Casper as number three. Uh, number three. Just one one reason why. Um, why? Just the music is 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 not connecting. What uh, the the his rap to his, you or to his rap or his no, his uh, like, piano. Everything it, it's just not authentic. It doesn't come from a place of you know authenticity. Like he's not collaborating with people. Which place he's do you think it comes from? Basically, just hopping on. Is it a place popular. of hunger that he he needs nah. to have stuff out is there to feed the family or what That's is why it? he hops on? Everything is cloud chasey. I mean, like, everything that he does musically. Like, when he, he featured Zola on a track, it was to chase cloud. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Any, anything he does, it's got, not, it's got not, like, an artistic purity to it. Um, so that's the whole entire thing. It's, it's about proving a point too much. But the but music business is him, yeah, music the business. Now that's the, the thing business. that that's what he's always been about. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's because our media is so like um, small that a guy like Casper could survive of making terrible music for a long time and still be prominent by having for, big for publicity stuff. Yeah. Like even the Tanya Wotsebib and like Dr. Blaze those were nice, you were like but losing yourselves to it. Those were nice songs. That was like his great album. But since then, we haven't heard any great music apart from like Baby Girl. Okay. It's okay. my favorite song since. Okay. Second number two. Since his first album. Um, I'd say number two, I'd say Nasty. Um, yeah, so like, I mean, like the whole entire American wannabe style thing did not pan out. But wait, just not a wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait. I'm just saying it. Not it a didn't, wait. But yeah. I, when I started listening to hip hop, like in the 88, 89, yeah. it was because of the, the Fresh Prince, yeah. right? Okay. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Yeah. And what they did, because it was so commercial, yeah. then I started digging deeper into music for the soul. And then yeah. I found my underground hip hop, yeah. which I loved. Yeah. Now, doesn't an artist like Nasty C, uh, maybe to a large uh, consumers in the US, they're like, oh, is, is there South African hip hop? And he becomes the gateway no. into South African hip hop. No. Where guys Why? will because actually start like digging. Yeah, exactly. So what they mm. do is that they expect that everybody else from South Africa is going to sound American. But and the social media. And they, and they, and they, and they dismiss it. Then. Like if you um, were to say like, someone Think right about now. it like, now, like right now, like probably the most influential rapper. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't live to actually see his success is probably Mbora. Mm -hmm. Because his influence can be heard on every single track by any rapper that is dropped as uh, an Ama Piano song since he's died. Hmm. Okay. okay. Next. No, number one. So, number the one. The worst artist mm. in SA right now. At the moment, um, the worst artist. Across uh, any genre. Because not yeah, you are to be hip Why yeah, are taking the rappers only? No, uh, Shimza. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. He's okay. a great DJ. Like, yeah. like from a DJ skill perspective, mm -hmm. he's a great DJ. But I just think that you know he's too lost in that dream that a whole lot of these tech DJs had that they were going to make it in Europe and they were going to make it in Miami and they're going to be tech the next. DJs? I mean, you name them. I mean, no, me. you name them. We're uh, asking you. Everyone who goes to Miami, the the Timbers, Euphonics, the DJ Freshes, uh, DJ Fresh dropped a dud album just not too long ago, uh, or an EP. I don't know. Like it doesn't matter. But someone of his stature should not even be dropping an EP. Like he should be dropping a groundbreaker. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, all of them. Uh, the black, black coffees, the, the really Cairo, well. nah, like no? he, he's made it as a DJ, mm. right? And but that's more because of the gimmick of him playing. Mm. You understand, rather than like actual the music that Why he's is made. It? But Why he's is it he doesn't have gimmick. music with like really great people like um, Alicia Keys or Asha. Having or, and the, and music has... with great people, but that music is not great music. It just shows um, the artistic ineptitude. Okay. of an artist so like if I can make a song with Pharrell and not make a hit I mean that's Pharrell yeah. and then at some point in time every artist in the world was guaranteed a hit just by collaborating mm. with Pharrell um, you know what I mean Asha like you know 
what happened with that song with Aisha? Yes, it was great for the brand. Yes, it was great enough to maybe garner a, a Grammy nomination. But I mean, there isn't a black coffee song that I can say has really shaken South Africa. You know what I mean? Or even the world. Okay, that, that's enough. Tell me, try me, down me. Um, this is the only episode so far where we, we haven't, I think, uh, yeah. make it in the spirit of like our man dropping knowledge. Let's, let's take a shot. How do you feel about that? No, take shots, guys. You that's must also they, take a no, shot. No, that's what they're there for. But you must also take a shot. Mm. Okay, I'll, one take for one. You and one for I'll take one in solidarity with you guys. Oh, you guys. no, yeah. no. Don't tell people when I will cock up till and then you're trolling us there on Twitter. No, no, what are I we won't drink troll into? you. Uh, Nota drinking what are we to Nota drinking. Too heavy, too heavy hitters, yeah. And yeah, no, I, I mean like, the thing about <laughs> okay, not drinking, drink again. Okay. the Stop thing talking. about not drinking is that you can do it on a good occasion. You okay, know what I mean? do it, do it. Yeah. You seem like a smart, you're an intelligent dude. Right, and yeah, I think most of your moves seem to be calculated. So when you troll people, what are you are hoping to gain from trolling, or you just troll uh, for the sake of trolling? Um, hmm. Like I trolled a lot last year because <laughs> you know. Um, Look at you smiling before you like answer you're that. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. I, it's not that I'm pleased with myself. I just look at like what are the outcomes. Like we were able to, you know, really um, mobilize a pro-feminist agenda, especially amongst the males within our industry, and that influenced the culture a lot. You look right now; the JSC has nominated a first woman um, chief justice, mm -hmm. you know, as a recommendation. Um, the president signed a, a, a couple key laws into you know a couple key acts into law um like the sex offenders list where all sex offenders not just sex offenders who offend against children mm. will be published publicly so women will be able to access now wait, 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 when wait, you're wait, going wait, through wait. tinder Was, is that all because of your trolling no it's not all because of my trolling but mm. i mean my trolling has contributed to that movement mm. and that's Ow. why i was doing I was doing so because, you know, um, as someone who's a prominent male within the industry, I was calling out a lot of abusive uh, men. So stepping out of the line of like sworn silence, which a lot of men have done um, within the industry, which kind of like gaslights women. You know what I mean? When they call out abusers and then all the men keep quiet. And then it seems like it's just a case of angry black women syndrome instead of an actual, you know, problem that it, we're facing within our industry. So we're seeing how that has helped, you know, um, push the conversation forward for people to actually admit that there's actually a problem, not just within the entertainment and arts sphere, but in our society as a whole. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with um, the results of that. Um, but also, I mean, trolling to an end, you know, um, knowing that, you know, it does have destructive effects as well. So mm. like, that's also another reason why I've stopped using um, social media because, you know, now I want to um, be more vocal about the destructive effects. Um, and have you been so far? I mean, I'm, that's what I'm doing right now, you know. But don't you for, reach more people through social media, though? And Well, at first, when I needed to mm. reach more people through social media, I yeah. did so. And it's a tool that I've used effectively to reach more people. But I think now I've reached enough people that um, I don't need um, social media for people to know that I exist. Speaking of like reaching people, this, this uh, I'm, for a lack of a better phrase, I'm gonna call it this voice of the people, this persona, this public mm. persona, the authoritative, you know. Mm. Um, has that always been the plan? Like, I'm gonna make artists and names and then I'm gonna slip in? Or did you just, while you were doing all this building of brands, then all of a sudden Sabawal, uh, being this public figure? Um, what was the game plan? Like, were you always like, okay, this is no. how I'm going to get in by building brands? No, um, I've always uh, been like influential within uh, my sphere and my industry, like since I was a young kid, you know what I mean? Um, so just because um, I became more of a public persona because lockdown, you know, made people more interested in social media than watching television and all the other traditional media and everything else. So it was a timing thing. It was just the time, you know. And um, also, 
people's attitudes have changed. You know, people are not just looking at, you know, the superstar celebrity, the Will Smith of the world. They're looking at, like, um, instead of Robert Downey Jr. being, you know, um, the person all the kids want to be like, the kids want to be like yeah. Elon Musk, mm -hmm. you know, um, who's an engineer. So, you know, again, um, in any field, you know, um, you can carve a lane for yourself and make it something that people also want to look up to. And I felt like the one thing that we lack is people from, or people who perform in the executive role within our industry. Um, and I wanted to be the role model for the kids that want to be that guy, you know what I mean? Okay, but how famous do you want to be, Nota? Because, you know, on so well, when <laughs> you, you were on social <laughs> media, you were like super extreme. And we know that in this day and age, people push the envelope yeah. Yeah. because they want to reach a certain level or a certain audience or large or appeal to mass audiences. Mm. You know? Well, for me, it wasn't really about appealing to a mass audience. Yeah. Mm. It was about influencing. People like drama. That's and true, you know, and I know that. You know? and, 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 and you know, Guti, when you no. push, when you push the way that you do, yeah. that, you know, you gain a yes. bigger audience. And that's the thing, is that that was like a consequence of, you know, my actions. A calculated consequence. Not really. It was, an unintended, it was an <laughs> unintended consequence because, mm. you know, I actually prefer my anonymity. You know what I mean? I hate, um, I like the preferential treatment maybe. No, um, no, no. Wait, you wait. want to be famous? No, um, yeah. that's not the thing. <laughs> but the thing is that I needed to archetype a certain type of media personality that could be built online yeah. to influence other kids to be able to do that. And for me, it's about how many other kids do you now see online pushing the envelope, building their own um, media personalities, um, you know what I mean? Um, basically based off some of the things that they saw me doing. And that's um, basically it. Even in the music space, it was about how many kids I can influence to actually decide, okay, we're going to start a record label, we're going to run it successfully, we're going to get to the top of the charts and everything else, and there's not going to be any adults or any khrotmans or anyone involved. It's just us, you know, as the actual mm. generation that makes this music, you know, and we're going to circumvent the gatekeepers and that's what we were able to do and do so successfully that was part of my journey and a lot of my journey has now influenced a lot of the kids if you look at this i'm a piano generation they don't need any khutmans and everything else because we didn't we showed them that we don't need the khutmans mm. and therefore their dreams were valid mm. and the validation of those dreams meant that we could democratize uh, basically access to this industry and open up the industry not by saying hey we're going to open up the industry and talk talking about it. No, we actually demonstrated and said, hey, this industry is fair game and you can make it from anywhere. Um, do, you, do you never feel unsafe? And like, what does your wife say? Yeah. Does she never, is there never any co like cause of concern, Hori? Hey, dude, you Babe. said this about this person. Mm. And then how, you know, when you get out the strategy, like, mm. is that why you're so tense all the time? <laughs> the nah, the uh, mm. not really. I actually roam quite freely, you know. Um, Aosabi Luto. No, not really. Uh, Stogie T is out there, you and, know. And, and he, I walked he, up yeah. to him, you <laughs> know. Yeah, but he, he, he was on his back, so uh, he might want to be on his no, feet this time. No, no, no. He, he fell onto his back. I walked up to him and I said, I confronted him. I said, is there a problem? Uh, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I don't have any fear of confrontation. Um, or any fear. So you're not scared of anyone also? Like, there's no, no one... No, like, I mean, like, there's nothing that I did that was, like, you know, wrong. But do you ever pick on, like, defenseless kids? I'm looking at... Uh, no, not defenseless like kids. Nasty. So it, is, do you know, <laughs> nasty. Like, How is he defenseless? <laughs> He's got a whole entire, you know, um, um, record label and, you know, mm. corporate hegemony behind him. Like, you know, and his entire fan base. And look at me. Do I have a fan base? No. So if you look at anyone, all of the people that have ever gone against have always been bigger than me, more famous than me, or people think that they're more accomplished than me. I've never picked on anyone smaller than me. Do the Why ever. do you think you don't have a fan base? No, maybe I might now have a fan base, but I mean, like, prior to that, prior mm. to, I didn't, I didn't do it because I got a fan base all of a sudden and I think, no, let me now uh, pick on people. Mm. Um, just like anybody, name them. There's not one person who is not either you know, 
perceived to be either more accomplished than I am or whatever that, you know, I've actually um, picked on. What, so Yeah. But tell me, what's the one thing that hurts you from other people's fan bases when they hit back at you, when they troll back at you? The one thing that hurt me yeah. the most was Patrick Shire's death. Yeah. And it happened like a day after I'd already quit, or two days after I'd quit social media. Mm -hmm. um, because I saw it coming, like something like that. You know what I mean? What do you mean? I you saw, saw it I, I, I saw that the, the extent to which the cyberbullying is going, the trolling, the whole entire weaponization of fan bases is going, mm -hmm. it's going to get to a point where, you know, like Casper's fans cyberbullied me because I said his album is not great he's copying drill he yeah. should be making it more of an authentic south african sound instead of copying what's popping in america right, right now yeah you know that is a fair criticism of someone who's been in the industry who's earned his stripes you know mm -hmm. what i mean if i cr criticize a product like that you know i should be allowed to do that i've earned that at least privilege within the game i've got skin in the game to actually say that mm -hmm. what he will do is that he'll weaponize that against me instead of now saying okay this is one person that doesn't like my album he'll now bring his fan base okay attack this person how does he bring his fan base like be, be, are you we responsible retweet, for the you, people that you, follow us yes we are when we get to a certain level of following when you've got 3.4 million people that follow you and that follow everything that you do and that you tell them you understand you can incite violence upon people mm -hmm. and like he should have been smart enough to understand that it could bring deadly consequences and that's why you know um, I've been very vocal about this whole entire thing of Casper um, using his fan base and that leading to the death of Patrick Shire because I think that, you know, people are afraid to speak about it, but if we don't speak about it, then we don't see the destructive effects that um, social media has as well as its capability to build, um, you know, at breakneck speed. It can also destroy at such a speed that people are unable to... Um, basically tell the difference between what's happening on social media and what's happening in reality, you know. Um, so that's also another but, thing. But wait, uh, the same thing that uh, Casper's fans did to Patrick Shai, isn't that the same thing you do to... I'm, not, know, I'm not Casper's fans, I'm not ten, I don't number in tens of thousands. I'm one person. But, but it and, takes one and, line and, for, and that's my thing, is that yeah. it's not just, for me, it's just me. If I say it's something, it's you plus 10k no, followers that you have. I don't. It's not my followers. Are not people who follow me to retweet what I say and attack people. No, my followers are people who follow just to look at my content because my content is thought provoking. I don't have a fan base of any. If you say trash about Nota, people mm -hmm. will not attack you because you said something about me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't have fans that defend me or anything. Oh, you can't say. You can say trash about me on social media, and people will retweet that and encourage that. How does that make you feel? Um, I don't feel anything about that, um, you know, um, because at the end of the day, um, for me, social media has always been a tool. Mm -hmm. And I use the tool, I don't let the tool use me. What's the biggest misconception that people have about mm -hmm. you? Sure, I, I have no idea like what people think about me. But just based on like how they react towards you, you should have like some idea. Um, I've never, I've never had people react to me in an, unpredictable, in an unpredictable way. Like if I say something that I'm trying to make people angry on, and then they react angrily, mm -hmm. I get exactly what I expected. So no, but the, one of the biggest things is because people always say, "Why does he think he's the authority?" Yeah, I mean. So is there like, something that they don't know about you, or what is there that people don't no, know? They just think. I, I mean, I created that persona, yeah. the authority. What are you the authority of? No, I'm, I'm just, just saying I just created a, like the author, uh, the so authority. So like naked DJ, absolute faith. The authority is the alpha and omega. It's like you know, um, so it's. Is that not a god complex? I mean, megalomania is pretty useful when you're trying to actually influence a whole lot of people. So, you know, um, knowing how to use it is something that I've studied. Um, and but at the end of the day, people will say, okay, fine, but why does he call himself the authority? Why did he choose that name? Can you back it up? What, if you had to give us one line to say, this is why I'm the authority, 
I, what, that's the thing that about line? being the authority is that you know you, you shouldn't have to prove it you know what i mean it should just become evidently obvious to people like you know what i mean mm. and um within the music do you think people space, can see why you yeah, the authority uh, uh, yeah like at the end of the day a lot of the most prominent people within the music industry rely on me for advice rely on me to make you know decisions and stuff like that um so those are the people that i speak to on a you know on a day-to-day -day basis mm. so that's basically my my target audience um whereas you know the general public it's neither here nor there uh, whether they know what i'm talking about so Aunanda. not to say i don't care um because i do care deeply um about ensuring that you know we're able to communicate even this higher level knowledge to the masses so that it's explained to people and people actually get it and understand it, you know what I mean? It's not like a foreign concept. But um, I'm accepting that it's going to take time for them to get it. You so know eventually I mean? we'll get it? Eventually enough people will get it and enough people that get it uh, will be able to use it to get themselves further and forward in life. Do you sing? Yeah, I do. You know, my wife you, is the only person that actually likes my singing, um, uh, but everybody else uh, makes me sing on songs so that they can be recorded that and they can torture can't me. Sing. If your wife, your wife is supposed to like everything you do. Well, my, nah, you that's know, the thing. Like, you know, it's like well, your wife is Yeah, you're right. Like, you're she's, right. A, she, she's actually, she's actually, nah, she, she's not a fan. I wouldn't call her a fan, but she likes my singing. She just likes the tone of my voice. Can we I hear, hate, can we? No, yeah, I hate the sound of my voice. Because you had to have like a demo for, no, it was a tab to sing it, right? No, nah, not even, no. So I've, I've what sung happened a, a couple in studio? Songs. I've sung a couple songs. I've, I've done Umfaz Wepepa, yeah. uh, which is Kid Almost, X. Okay. okay. Um, oh, I thought you were... Yeah, I was singing on the hook there. I did uh, Preacher, I did Karma, I did Questers, Take That. I did the hook on that song, but obviously, like, I tuned my voice. I, I was using autotune for the first time back then. Can um, you serenade our little ah, no, here? No, 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 no. Just, just, just uh, quiet. No, nah, sing a song. Yeah. Serenade me. Serenade. Well, I, 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 I can't sing a song. Why? I can't. Like, okay, can you then rap? Because remember there was, I don't know uh, if you saw this, but he once wanted to like rap Nah, I can Kespa, rap, like, I can rap. Kespa. No, I can rap, I can rap, yeah. I can rap uh, a Kanye West verse. That's, no. That, no. Like, you just said, Nasty C is trying to be American, American and no. here you've dropped P. Diddy, you've dropped Kanye West. What's next? It was the 20th day, third month of the 90s. Florence Nightingale, maternity ward, filled with guy knees. Me, my head front, coming out feet behind me. Ladies on hospital beds and labeled with high knees. The immaculate conception to a welcome and reception. Like Julius, born through a caesarean section. No recollection of the stage of stories I'm told. As I behold, while my story unfolds. So if you're not a rap, you need to have a go-to verse that you can always go to. And that's like my go-to <laughs> verse. Um, so it was the 20th day, third month of the 90s. So 20 March 1990, that's the day I was born. Florence Nightingale, the hospital the I was hospital. born uh, yeah. in Parktown. Um, yeah, and I came... C-section. I was born through a caesarean section. Oh, I yeah. see what you did there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I think just like that we need to take a break because <laughs> those were some fire bars. You don't think it's? I know nah, you're a hater. Fire. I know uh, you're a hater. No, 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 I can no, no. see in your face. <laughs> nah, I didn't do you it there. I, I, I wanted to take a break, but Let that was last yeah. I'm, I'm gonna switch this up. We're gonna take a break because I wanna buy my partner in crime time because he's gonna rap against you because Casper's not here. We couldn't get Casper. Uh, but we'll get him to, uh, to respond can, to you. Casper can't <laughs> rap, rap against. So me. let's take a break. We'll be right back, and then he's gonna heavy hit him. Sianbuli Samakaya, welcome back. If you just joined us, this is Heavy Hitters, Naked DJ. Kamu. The D is later. Is that what you said? Yeah, and this is later. <laughs> this this is this later. This is later. It's I mean, about you took to happen. Your robe. But yeah, it's your about to happen. When it's happen. fluffy, I say no, it's a When it's silk. I'm not Hugh Hefner. You know, Hugh Hefner you has be. the. Uh, no, oh, he's with silk. Hmm? Eh? His was silk. His was silk. <laughs> yes, I think exactly. I need to get you that for your birthday. I don't want to be a Hugh Hefner. Oh, you know, okay. I can't handle more than one woman at a time. I'm good. That's a story for another day. I was gonna, I was about to jump in you. Not like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I just want to focus on this one. This one, Hannah. Oh, no, no, I'm with him on that one. <laughs> you observing us. Speaking mm. of observing, yeah. you're, you're someone that's always like studying the game and you know, you're, you're well in mm. tune. Um, with the hits 
and mm. the, the missus. missus. <laughs> Um, I want to know from you, like, who, who do you think is the next big thing? Who do we need to look out for? Who's going to be the next great artist or just a flash in the pan, mm. like flash man? Soup, we never saw them. Shoo. Hey, man. Um, it's always tough because you never know. Like, you know, um, there's so many things that come into play um, when it comes to actually, like, creating a generational talent. What comes into play? Just like um, their relevance, mm -hmm. mm, their resonance, like do they own like a certain era, you know, mm. and uh, are they era defining? So right now, I mean, the person who's defining the current era is probably Cubs of the Small, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, he's a DJ mm. and it's tough to be a DJ and, you know, obviously not benefit from the fact that you are a performing artist. So, you know, um, but yeah, now I think he's the general, generational talent of our time. Hmm. I want to ask you this question again. There's everyone, there's someone that we are afraid of. There has to be mm -hmm. that one person. Who's that one person that, that you're afraid of? Uh, I mean, afraid, I, I don't fear people, like, probably Or you listen God. to, or when they say, when they yeah, snap their like fingers. Yeah, probably, like, the one person that yeah. probably has, you know, um, the, Huge author the authority on over you. me yes. is, yeah. is my wife, uh, yeah. So you'd never <laughs> say anything crazy about her, even if she maybe deserved it, like, they're on the net. Because, I mean, you've made yourself the authority. You, you have to be biased. Like, you have to be objective, nah, not biased. No, 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 no. I'm not the authority when it comes to her. She's, she's, the, the, she's the ultimate authority. <laughs> she's the main in charge. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. So, yeah. Are you blushing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm light-skinned, so possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what they say about light-skinned boys? Uh, no. I'll tell you off air. Okay. Uh, what can we expect uh, moving forward for the rest of the year in 2022? What are you going to be serving um, us? Yeah, man. I'm finally, you know, getting cracking on writing uh, my autobiography, which is, you know, a daunting task in of itself. Um, but, I mean, it's very important um, for where I see my career progressing. And, like, getting into writing uh, a lot more. Um, Usually people write those at like 50 or 60. Why now? You're like nah, 31? I think like there's an important um, journey that I've gone through in my 20s mm. that I really want to share with a lot of, especially um, black men mm -hmm. who are about to get into their 20s as well. Um, and I want to share it from a perspective of someone who has just gone through it, you know? And I feel like that audience and that market is there and they're looking for some sort of guidance and it's the guidance that i never got when i was in my 20s mm -hmm. um as well that i longed for and i sought out in various different ways but if i were to be able to put it in like a, a book yeah. format yeah. a novel format i think that would be good um also beyond just releasing a book um you know um going around um selling the book promoting it mm you know, um, and selling my journey as well. Um, cause I think that, you know, I'm but, at a stage. But a book is like, isn't that like a vanity project that famous people Also do? because it's an autobiography. Um, I mean, you could look at it as a vanity project. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, one needs to accept the times and times have moved, um, to the point where, you know, people don't just write their best work when they're in their uh, 40s or 50s, you know what I mean? And also, um, I feel like a lot of uh, newer generation uh, men are lacking in, the term, like, in terms of guidance. Mm. And um, that's something that, you know... So I'll, you're saying there's okay. a lot uh, more bad fathers out there, or are fathers neglecting their jobs? So yeah. what's happening? That's the thing. Fathers are too busy trying to be men. And to be a man is a big responsibility. You know what I mean? And um, 
they haven't had time to be fathers. And that's just because of the way the world works. Uh, it's extracted the father from the household and made the man into a tool of capital in the industry. You know, as a man, you are out there to um, get it, get it, get it. Get you it. know what I mean? And you're not there to actually take a moment and pause and think about your life. Also, like my brain is not the same as it was um, 10 years ago. Well, yeah, yeah. in my early 20s, like my brain was working a whole lot differently, um, a whole lot faster, you know what I mean? And now, at a time where I can pause for thought um, and think about, you know, um, those years in my life, I want to be able to build the rest of my life um, as a service to especially uh, men of younger generations who haven't, you know, gone through what I've gone through. But you can easily say, like, by the age of 60, you're going to have the same pause for thought. You know what I mean? Because you're relatively yeah. young. not So then is it going to be I, an, an installment of different I, books? Yeah, the, I, like, I want to do a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I've written music. Um, I'm getting into writing books now. Um, soon I'll be writing films. You, you know think what I mean? those books are going to win more awards that we will know about? <laughs> For me, nah. I mean, like, no. The the awards are what's the uh, awards, awards yeah. that everybody knows about. I mean, summers are not unknown or whatever, mm. you know. Um, but the main reason is like I want to spread the ideas and I want to spread the thought. And what I found is that a lot of the best ideas in the world are the preserve of the elite and are kept up in the universities and everything else. And I want to democratize the knowledge the same way mm. we were able to democratize the music mm. and inspire people to get into the music industry and become record executives from whatever township they come from. You know, who knows what's the record label that's behind um, what's this boy who's got the Mlando Challenge? Dos, mm. yeah. right now. All I know is that he was inspired to think that I can set up a studio in my Kasi of Guatemala and be the next Cuesta or be the next Kidex or whatever. You know what I mean? And the mere fact that people like that see my generation as an inspiration, you know, just proves that the work that we're doing was worthwhile. Um, but the work is not done, you know. The ideas still need to be spread and I need to be able to spread them in other ways other than just, you know, um, trolling. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please. Uh, so we have the book, we have a lot of writing, we have films, yeah. and, and th that's, that's yeah. where you're going to pack the bus? The no, bus. we can't leave it there. No, you, we're not we, it there. We're right here. You have a segment on this show called Word on yeah, the Street. I so mean, what's the, 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 the tell, tell our the, viewers the, 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 what the word on the street, about? The Word on the Street segment um, is basically, it's like, it's, it's my take on a whole lot of what's happening on the streets right mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? It's like, hmm... Um, I guess um, it's a hot take. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? Of the not a, it's a not a take. Yeah, it's an authoritative take. <laughs> are you coming for anyone? What should we expect? No, Who are you coming for? No, Which institutions no, are you coming not, for? Which not, individuals are you for, coming for? I'm not coming for <laughs> anyone. You know, I'm just yeah. calling out the BS. You're just calling out All the right. BS. Is there BS you'd like to call out right now so we wrap? No, no. I, this I, I is your one time. Like you, you always do it on on Twitter. Now we like do it on like the heavy hitter. Like quick, now like, we like, only do it on time, the heavy like, hitters. Just, like, you know what I mean? One, just one. That one person. I know you. Nah, this one person. I think yeah. I I, I won. I that the thing is about social media is that I was able to quit while I was ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I I won all all the battles that I had on social media, and like I don't want to. on TV. I don't want to erase go. them. I don't want to erase those victories. Um, I want to move on <laughs> to the next chapter. You know, well, and no, my enemies can, mm, can, can watch me You're progress. You're going to rap now. I wouldn't be laughing <laughs> if I were you. You're about to, you, what do you think the rap is? When I said we're going to rap, I didn't mean, we're bye guys, wrap see up. you next we week. We are I rapping. You're going to rap show? against him. We, no. We, Must I give you words? <laughs> no, it's cool. Blue, booty, beautiful. They all what? start with the B. It's easy. He said you must have a, you were explaining it, man. When you rap, you must have a, a story. I get blue, I'm wearing blue. I'm booty, naked I've got DJ. Three beautiful, I'm beautiful. Naked go. DJ, not the clothed to rapper. Yeah. No rapping. Yeah. You almost had it there, but it didn't work out. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. No, Mother. thank you guys for having me. And yeah, no, um, I can't wait to, you know, obviously have more hot takes.
Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, can't wait for that. Don't forget, guys, log on to our Facebook page, our YouTube page as well. That's where you get that edited segment of the show. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we need to just squeeze it a little bit so that you guys can view it here on SABC One. So it's Heavy Hitters, Heavy Hitters on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram. It's heavy hitters underscore ZA. And of course, we have our hashtag, hashtag heavy hitters. And not that deep. <laughs>